Hello again, Gunas. Hopefully you can hear me. It's been a while. I've been uh, busy. I keep saying that, but truly I've been busy. Unlike the Arsenal board, who seem to be very content to sit upon their laurels and do very little as far as we can see on the transfer front, other clubs signing players galore. We just sit in there waiting to do the one deal that might excite us a little bit. So far, well, just nothing, is there? But the good news is I have a few updates. No um, official signings just yet, but uh, we're moving ever closer. Inch by inch, millimetre by millimetre, we're moving closer to actually signing someone. Should I move that water out of the way? It might be distracting to some of you. I don't know. I'm not too sure. But it's distracting me because I was looking at it just then. Uh, later on, be talking about how not to be a professional footballer. Paul Merson, uh, it's the latest book. And talking of latest books, Arsenal FC. A football transfer diary, 1996-97, Wenger. Wenger's era begins, is the subtitle for that book. Uh, links for it below, penned by yours truly. I uh, suggest you give it a look, and if you like it, do buy it. I'll be very pleased indeed if, um, if, you, if you actually like that book. And, um, well, it's all about what it says on the tin, really. It is a transfer diary of 96-97. It's also got... Um, details about news coverage uh, and matches during Arsene Wenger's first season. Of course, it was a very turbulent time. And the extract I'm going to read from Paul Merson's book also covers some of that period. So, um, so yeah, it's an in-detail, in-depth look at Arsene Wenger's first, um, first season. And the question that I'm asking throughout is, what's going on now with this um, kind of transfer hibernation if you like is it is it any different to what happened back then well the answer will be revealed if you read the book i'm not going to say any more about it for now anyway what am i going to talk about today gonzalo higuain the latest on him condogbia i'll be telling you the latest on him too ruben garcia all these names have been linked with us before dimitri paye a paye i think you say it like that or payet we're not too sure at the moment ashley williams what's the latest on him and finally wayne rooney well Let's get started with the current transfer news. Um, the big news, obviously, Gonzalo Higuain. Higuain. Higuain, that's it. Um, it's mispronounced so many times, I'm not even sure how you pronounce it anymore, but he's Argentinian, so it'd be a Spanish pronunci pronunciation, which would be Higuain. Sorry, I'll keep itching my eyes. I've got terrible hay fever today. But um, but anyway, I'll be, I'll be sneezing in my cereal if we do actually manage to sign this guy. The price keeps going up. Uh, the other day I said it was going to be £20 million. Now we're hearing it's going to be £22 million, and it's very close to happening, this deal. Um, it was predicted, strangely, um, that this deal would go through on the 11th of July. Personally, I don't think it's going to take that long. If it's going to go through, it will go through, I think, 1st of July. Possibly before, because um, it looks like now that Real Madrid have got a manager in Carlo Ancelotti, they can actually do business with us. And Higuain looks set to leave. So I was thinking before that it's going to be £130,000 a week, the deal. Uh, now I'm hearing it's £150,000 a week. So again, the price keeps going up and up. But knowing Arsenal, they will try and try and negotiate that one downwards. So Higuain, yeah, he could be on the way, as I said, for £22 million, £150,000 a week. Seems set to sign a four-year deal. Um, that will be the kind of signing that would excite everybody that's associated with the club if it does indeed go through. Another signing that perhaps wouldn't excite us as much, but would be one for the future. He's been talked about as a as a new Patrick Vieira. Jeffrey Condogbia. Um, well, he's um, 20 years of age and £10 million is the asking price, apparently. Um, Arsene Wenger didn't want to talk about him before. He's an under-21 international for France. Um He's delighted, though, that he's been linked with Real Madrid, so it looks likely he'll go there. The other the other possible um, uh, destinations for him, Manchester City are in the run-in, Chelsea, uh, AC Milan, Borussia Dortmund, uh, Juventus. He can take his pick. And as Arsene Wenger correctly said, everyone is interested in him, so he didn't want to comment about him when asked. It was some time ago. So Condogbia could be dead in the water, that one, or... Well, I suppose it's about where the player wants to go. It sounds like he wants to go to Spain. So, therefore, I'd say, unlike... Well, he's already in Spain, obviously, with Sevilla. So, uh, looks like he's going to stay where he is, uh, in terms of the country, at least. But move on to Real Madrid. Um, it will 
be less of a disruptive disruption to his life. Um, talking of Spain, uh, Levante winger Ruben Garcia has been linked with us. 19 years of age, 8.5 million pounds is the amount of the buyout clause. Uh, there is interest from other clubs, but I think the Levante striker, uh, sorry, winger, could be on the way to Arsenal because it's gone quiet on that front. So I'd say that's. I wouldn't say it's likely, but I, I think there's a possibility that uh, Garcia will will arrive, being only 19, and and of course Arsene Wenger does like to sign Spanish players at the moment. That does seem to be the fashion, and you can understand that with Spain doing so well in all international competitions. Uh, meanwhile, Dimitri Payet, or Payet, however you pronounce it, I'm not too sure this one's going to happen. Um, there is increasing interest from other clubs in this player. Uh, Lille um, would, well, I'm not sure they want to sell him, but if they are going to sell him, they're looking for £15 million. If we could do a straight swap deal with Jovino moving in the opposite direction, I'm sure we'd be interested, but uh, is that going to happen? Players 26 years of age, uh, 10 goals and 10 assists in the French League last season. That sounds quite good, but will he be able to uh, up the ante in the Premier League? Probably not. He'll need at least a year to settle before we see the best of him. Um, Newcastle also interested. I, I personally think Graham Carr, their chief scout, is likely to sign him because he seems to sign lots of French players at the moment, whereas we're not as uh, keen to do so as we once were. And Marseille are also interested in uh, Payet. So if Payet does, uh, or Payet, if he moves to Marseille instead of Arsenal or Newcastle, um, then perhaps Marseille will lose interest in Jovino. So Jovino, we might be stuck with him another year. I can sort of see that happening. It's gone very quiet on the Jovino front. Uh, Leon are also interested in Payet. Uh, Ashley Williams, can't see that one happening at all. He's 29 um or will be 29 very soon. Um, £10 million for this um, Swansea City captain. OK, Swansea did very well last season, um, but, um, well, I just can't see that at all. Everton and, and Liverpool are interesting, and there's been no contact, according to Swansea. Um, obviously, they're going to try and play it down as they want to keep him, but um, anyway, like I said, I, I've got no idea why we've been linked with him. I can see him going to Everton, uh, obviously, that would be um, Martinez uh, now installed as their manager. So that that I can imagine. Wayne Rooney is another one difficult to imagine. How are we going to sign Wayne Rooney? He wants £200,000 a week, apparently. He's going to be quite a hefty transfer fee payable as well. He's going to be in talks on Monday, apparently, with uh, David Moyes, um, the new Manchester United manager. It might be that Rooney... Wayne Rooney does leave United, but I don't see him joining us. Arsene Wenger paying a huge amount of money and a huge salary for a player who, um, according to some reports, smokes. I just don't think that's going to happen, even though, obviously, Arsene Wenger has admiration for, for Wayne Rooney, and why not? He's an excellent player. The, the story in the media is that Wayne Rooney will play um, just behind Higuain um, in the new attacking lineup that we are putting together. No, it's not going to happen. Uh, Marouane Fellaini, uh, Fellaini, I should say, I'm sort of pronouncing it like he's Spanish, obviously he's Belgian. Could he be joining us? Um, it would be nice, wouldn't it, to have a, have a player with the first name Marouane. Um, sounds a bit like uh, John Wayne's real name, it was Marion, apparently. Um, and then if if we can sort of push through, uh, push through that deal, I'd be really pleased. A lot of bookmakers will be less pleased. Apparently they are uh, it's now odds on that he's going to join us 9 to 20 according to some bookies so the bookies often get it right and talking of bookies of course brings me on to Paul Merson um, who was renowned for um, for going to the bookies quite a lot so I'm going to read a short extract well it might be quite a long extract I'm not sure from his book of course talking of books don't forget the Arsenal FC um, new book um, by me Yours truly, a football transfer diary 96-97, Wenger's era begins. Look down below, there will be links to buy that particular book. Anyway, here's uh, Merson's book. It's um, the part where Arsene Wenger arrives at Highbury, brings sugar cubes with him, the revolution begins. Anyway, Vice Chairman David Dean came into the Arsenal training ground September 96 and told us about the new gaffer. His name's Arsene Wenger, he said. He's previously been in charge at Monaco and for the last few years he's been working in Japan. 
Apparently, he was a new boss at the Japanese club Nagoya Grampus. <laughs> it says here, Nagoya Grampus Zaki, what's name 8FC. Well, that's what it sounded like to me. And he'd become friendly with the vice chairman after watching us play against QPR in, in 1988. We were then told he was one of the best managers in the business, that he'd been recommended by Gerard Houllier, who was the, who was the technical director of the French, a, uh, French FA at the time. Nobody else had heard of him either. All the lads looked at one another and went, who? When Arsene turned up, he looked like a science teacher and sounded like Inspector Clouseau from the Pink Panther films, and it didn't help. In fact, it was difficult to take him seriously at first. Ray Parler spent the morning uh, he arrived whispering the famous Clouseau line, It's a boom. It's a boom. In my ear. Every time Arsene Wenger opened his mouth. But by the time we'd finished our first training session with Arsene, I knew that life at Arsenal would never be the same again. The bloke was a genius. It all started on the day before his first match, which was away to Blackburn, 12th of October. Arsene wanted us to do a warm-up session rather than taking us to uh, out to a training pitch to work our calves. He had us on exercise mats in the ballroom at the team hotel. Some of the lads started giggling. Ray was doing his boom voice. But after a few demonstrations of what he wanted us to do, the whole squad was groaning away as we stretched this muscle group and that outer abductor. It was a million miles away from anything we'd done under George Graham, um, Bruce Rioch, or Don Howe, or even at international level. The old hamstring lunges were gone, and instead we were arching our backs and wiggling our hips like dancers in a Beyonce video. It worked though. Arsene's new technique started to take effect pretty quickly. After a week or two, everyone noticed they were feeling a lot sharper in training and in matches, and I felt a lot more supple and more flexible. I felt fresher after games. All of us did. I honestly reckon Tony Adams, Steve Bold and Lee Dixon squeezed three or four more years out of their career than they would have ever dreamt of under Bruce Rioch or George Graham because of Arsene's stretching techniques. They kept us fitter. And then, of course, he starts talking about the whole uh, situation with England. And um, anyway, um, something similar was going on. Obviously, uh, Glenn Hoddle was manager of England and he'd worked with Arsene Wenger before. So uh, he continues, behind the scenes at Highbury, Arsene Wenger changed the way we went about our day-to-day -day lives. All of a sudden, the food at the club canteen was different. Lasagna and heavy pasta dishes disappeared from the serving hatch. Instead, we were served greens, grilled fish, and steamed rice in small portions. There were bowls of raw vegetables with dips. Broccoli came with everything. Today, all players eat like that, but back then it was unheard of, and a lot of the lads hated it. Wrighty was always moaning his head off at lunchtime. Bloody hell, he'd whinge. What's with all the greens, boss? Everything was measured. For example, we were only allowed to eat certain amounts of steak in the build-up to a game, and it was always weighed out to the ounce. As we were eating, Arsene would wander between the tables, talking to players. You've got to chew to win, he'd say. He was constantly banging on about eating slowly, because he knew it would help us lose excess weight. Apparently, it takes 20 minutes for the brain to realise the stomach's full. That meant by eating slowly, I could stop myself from pigging out when I didn't need to. It also meant the food could digest properly and we'd be getting the benefits of all the nutrients of our crunchy greens. It tasted horrible, but we could see his point. The biggest shock to some of the lads was when alcohol disappeared from the players' lounge. Managers were always telling players to cut out drinking, but Arsene Wenger was one of the first to ban it from the club entirely. He realised that the game was changing and footballers needed to be turned into athletes. Getting sloshed after games or restarting the Tuesday club wasn't going to help anyone if opposing teams were pinging the ball around at 1,000 miles an hour. Instead, Arsene Wenger got us taking vitamins and eating tablets. For big games, we would sometimes go to a holiday inn uh, in Islington, where a sports scientist would, would turn up with a massive syringe. It was filled with a lorry load of yellow gunk, and as I rolled up my sleeve and lay back on the couch, he'd stick it in my arm. Nobody ever told me what it was, and I'm not sure what it did, but it, I could always taste it in my mouth when the needle went in. It was pretty strange stuff, but the injections didn't bother me, and I was always first in the queue for them. Anything for a buzz. There were more shops. Whenever we walked into training, physio Gary Lewin would be waiting to shove a creatine tablet into our gobs. That was Arsenal all over. We never had to do anything for ourselves. It was all done for us. In our dressing room before the Blackburn match, Arsene walked around and gave us a massive brown tablet minutes before kickoff. It was pure caffeine, the equivalent of 10 Starbucks coffees. My heart started banging away and over 30 minutes later I was still going. When we went back in at half time, just as the buzz was wearing off, he walked around again, though this time he gave us a sugar cube. What the hell's this? I thought. He told us to suck on the on the cube slowly, and we all looked at each other. None of us knew what the hell was going on. We were used to having teacups chucked at us, not sweets. 
When we found out he'd actually watched us play several times before signing his contract with the club, it all made sense. We would often start the second half of the game quite slowly and could sometimes be a bit lethargic. The cubes were supposed to perk up the sugar levels in our blood and keep us sharp after the break. We won at Blackburn 2-0, but some of the lads weren't so chuffed about the caffeine tablets. Quite a few had to run to the Kazi after the final whistle had blown. Years later, one of my front teeth fell out when I was yapping my way through a match report on Soccer Saturday. Jeff and the lads fell about laughing because I had to spend the rest of the show whistling through a gap in my gnashes. When I went to the dentist and got charged a couple of hundred quid for a new tooth, I seriously thought about sending the bill to Arsenal. I'm sure it was down to the sugar cubes. So yeah, that's, um, that's Paul Merson's uh, autobiography, which is a good read. I hope I read it well enough to, to justify what I've just said. But um, I think I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, don't forget, do buy Arsenal FC, a football transfer diary, 1996-1997. Wenger's era begins, available on Amazon. Uh, the details are below. Until the next time, I will say in football parlance, away and up the Gooners.